Welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Tom Sanzo. Joining me today is Jacob. Hello, everybody. <sighs> Too bad I don't have a time machine so I could travel back to 80s where the whole phone craze started, considering what we're about to get into today. That is true, but I, I doubt time traveling would work for this current situation. It feels like uh, more of dimension hopping. <laughs> Then again, I don't have a mirror in my room. Ah, oh, yeah, mirror. Yeah, mi- yeah, the mirror, the mirror. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I had to process it for a bit, but yes, now I remember it. Oh, God. But anyway, in today's episode review, we are going to review the IDW comic, My Little Pony Generations. In this comic, uh, where is it? Uh, in this issue, the evil... Uh, Hi, hey, hey, dia, who attempted to destroy Pony Kind a long time ago, tasked her granddaughters, uh, Grackle and Dyer, Dre- Dyer, uh, with finishing the job. At the same time, Starlight Glimmer and the main six struggles when the school of friendship becomes overloaded with more students than they can handle. Alrighty then. So, first impressions are in order. So, Jacob, what do you think? Well, uh, I kind of fall short on the premise of this comic since the story is built around the uh, G1 series, of which I don't really know, don't know much. <laughs> I mean, I did origin- originally see Lauren Faust concept idea saying that Firefly was her, her favorite pony, hence Rainbow Dash exists in her place now, and the villains that were introduced in G4, like Tyria, Grogar, and the Smooth were originally in G1, although the latter isn't really a villain in this case. Uh, I think Silver will have more knowledge on the matter, but alas, the Pigeon Horse Rear Man isn't here today, so we'll have to make you. Yes, yes. But uh, speaking of which, the cover for the first issue, with the main six meeting their G1 counterparts. That is and... awesome. That, that, that cover there is just the best. You get to see Rainbow Dash and... Firefly, okay. Twilight and Twilight, um, Fluttershy and Posey, Rarity and I got no idea this one, Pinkie Pie and Surprise, Applejack and Applejack. Like, this is, this, this comic cover here is the best. Like, it, it shows what it really is going for. It really tells you what it's aiming at. And it is the best. Like, personally for me, this cover is a, on a scale of one to ten, a nine. I agree. <laughs> I still find it hilarious that out of everybody in the picture, App- Applejack is the spitting image of her original self. Yeah. And um, Pinkie Pie too. Uh, Pinkie Pie and Surprise, if you really think about it, uh, Lauren, when she made Pinkie Pie, or the concept of Pinkie Pie, was supposed to be Surprise. But instead of going... Oh, sorry, I'm not going. But instead of doing Surprise, she just created Pinkie Pie. And... That is also because there was a pony in the third generation named Pinkie Pie that they... Pff, now I'm going cross eye. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, sorry, um, you were saying? Yeah. Uh, that being said, however, none of, them, none of them appear in this comic series except for Applejack, which also follows up on another problem, which is the fact that this is supposed to be a G1 and G4 crossover, but that's a matter for another time. But outside of the story, I think the most noticeable problem this comic has uh, is art. I mean, the witches look fine, but ponies, on the other hand, um, well, we'll see that throughout the review. Hmm, okay, okay. I mean, uh, for the art style of the... Um, how do I put this? For the art style for the human characters, there is human characters... Um, spoilers if you haven't read it, but uh, we are dealing with Generation One here, so humans do exist in this universe. But anywho, yes, um, the art style for them, I've seen it before, and it was done in Gem and the Hologram, the comic for it. Uh, I I don't remember the artist's name. Uh, the artist here is uh. Michelle Cat Cas Cas uh, freak 
Akakisit Akakisitsayatore. Oh God, I got no idea how to say names. Yeah, true. Yeah, but so it's cool. uh, Michelle. But it's Michelle. So, um, from what I understand, she is a. Um, she mostly does work on Geminal hologram, if I'm not mistaken. Well, that would explain why the witches look like something out of uh, 80s pop star or something. <laughs> yeah, and that that is cool. That is cool. Um, honestly, if you're not a f- uh, if if you haven't really been absorbing uh, stuff from other mediums other than ponies, you probably won't know. But why did I watch that gem comic? I, I don't know. It has to do with something. But yeah, it was pretty fun. Right. But anywho, anything else? Mm, yeah, I think I can start. All right. And as for me, when it comes to uh, this comic, it was a very interesting read. Uh, I, I like the concept but it felt that it felt that it was lacking something. And when I was reading the whole thing, it feels like, okay, um, this character here, who were they? What were they? What? what? Like, I am no G1 expert. I know a bit of what I know from watching other reviewers talk about it and Semi remembering it because I watched it as a kid, but it took me a while to process everything. So yeah, um, this book was interesting to say the least. But anywho, uh, if you guys at home have not read this comic yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So we start off the comic with well, surprise, surprise. A mountain lava volcano place. Um, I think it's Groom Volcano. So they set up the place to be this creepy, eerie, uh, disgusting looking place. And we see two silhouettes, uh, talking and stuff and their conversation goes something like this. Uh, we're leaving you girls in charge. Love your mothers. Yes. So, in the next panel, we introduce to the uh, antagonist of the uh, story. And like I mentioned before, they are... <coughs> sorry. Uh, they are... Uh, R- Rika and... No, sorry, not Rika. Uh, they're Crackle and uh, Dyer. Dyer. This, I, I guess that's how you say it. Yes. So, anywho. Uh, from what we can tell, they're kind of teenagers. Um, uh, rebellious teenagers um, without a clue of what to do with life. And they're apparently witches. So they have their they have the whole home to themselves and they want to do do whatever teenage girls do you know like uh stay up all night order pizza watch horror movies and all that good cool stuff but suddenly one of the girls reminds the other that they have to do chores because mommy says so and in the list of chores were, uh, let's see, um, can't say, da, 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 da. uh, man, um, I'm trying to remember, Simon Misery make, was, you know, just chores, uh, chores, 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 chores. And one of the other chores is get revenge on ponies. Aha, so, there, there's a, plot for the story okay they do the chores they clean the house they do whatever they need to do and 
Now it's time for them to do a plotting. Yay. I'm going to pause here. So what do you think of the intro? Well, you don't notice it right away unless you look very carefully, but the first page is very subtle, the art problem that will follow. The volcano looks like from the perspective when you look from the top to bottom, it looks like it's bending forward. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I try not to think about it. Uh, I, I, yeah. I understand what you mean. But personally for me, the, the, what I'm looking at here is just that they're trying to show a, a mood, an atmosphere. And this is showing that, oh, this place is gloomy. This place is grim, very um, treacherous. And it works. But when it comes to perspective, it sucks. Yeah, perspective is going to become a big issue throughout this comic when you notice it. It, it becomes real apparent. Although I do love uh, the, the sign outside the volcano, trespassers will be eaten by trench. And when you see who trench is later. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But other but than that. Other than, yeah, but other than that, I do wonder what fathers these two witches uh, yeah, because I've seen their moms and they're not very good on the eye, I can tell you that. Oh, man. The, I... I... I, <laughs> I agree 100% with that. And, you know, a little bit of the drinky drinkies might help a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that opossum over there is certainly enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Okay. Oh, uh, but the colors of the skin, that, that, that is one of the things that puzzles me. You know, it's not that I f don't agree with it. It's not that I find it strange. Okay. I find it strange because what? <laughs> the German the holograms also have different type of skin colors. No. Uh, I'm processing it. No, it's the, no, they're, they're, they're normal. They're normal uh, human skins and human skin tones. This this is just... I'm just thinking, did somebody pop into Equestria Girls? <laughs> Very likely, considering the what follows later. But, but uh, putting that aside, I do like the design of the girls. Um, the girls look... How, how do I put this? They look full of energy. Like, okay, one of them is full of energy. Like, she's uh, rambunctious, she's punk rock, and she has attitude. And you can feel it by her looks. Uh, and the other one looks gloomy, uh, emo-ish, and very, um, just like... Layabout. Mm, what was it? Layabout. Yeah, it, 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 she's not lazy. She's just like... Uh, oh, with a drag. Yeah, mm. yeah. But I would say Raven. Some, some, a similar feeling like Raven from Teen Titans. Oh, she does have the eyeshadow. Mm, true. But uh, here's an interesting um, point that... Uh, sorry, here's an interesting fact that I noticed. Um, you know what? I, I need to know the name of the... Sorry, not the name, but I just need to know the characters because they don't really say say their names I, I think so but well, they you do say it you just <laughs> it's kind of hard to know That's yeah it. but who is who well the <laughs> pink one is grackle and the yellow one's dry okay oh my goodness okay 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 okay, okay. yeah I, I see it there but god dang it was that not a good maybe it's just me maybe it's just me but anywho, um, Grekel, uh, the purple one that looks like sim this similar to Starlight, she's on the plus size. And you don't see that often in media. I, I appreciate that. You don't notice it that well <laughs> in these early pictures. Oh no, you do, you do, because, uh, when she's sitting down, on the sorry, when she's laying down on the couch, you can clearly tell that oh wow, uh, she's a bit bigger from her cousin, and her cousin is lean and um, just lean. Her she has a um, 
lean slim body shape or body type, while uh, Grekel has a plus size body. And yeah, that's something that I can appreciate. I mean, it's just laying down doesn't really look like it's that much plus size, but just in comparison, you compare it to her, to the skinny one, then it looks like in comparison that it is. Yeah. But still, uh, that's besides the point. Um, for me personally, I find it very, um, very good. <laughs> how do, how do I word this? I find it, uh, mm, I'm trying to find the right words and not, we, not to try and sound condescending. I like it. I appreciate it. And it's one of those things where, yeah, this is great. Um, I, I like the direction they're going with. Yay. So, anywho, I guess there's no my points. Anywho, uh, let's carry on. <laughs> so, we go to the next page and somehow we're popping back into Equestria. And... I'll do another pause later, but let's carry on. Um, we see Pinkie Pie uh, go trying to find a place to have lunch, but everywhere she goes, she sees a lot of ponies. Uh, she, she, uh, she goes outside, she goes inside, and it seems that there's some kind of stampede and so on. And oh no, that, that's not great. Suddenly, uh, Alesso whoops, uh, ropes her in and pulls her into the teacher's lounge. I'm assuming it's the teacher's lounge. And we see the teachers or the lecturers or professors um, kind of try to have their conversations and whatnot or trying to have their lunch. And Starlight comes in and says they have a problem. And long story short, uh, the numbers of professors are stagnant while the numbers of students are increasing each day. And they don't really want to um, sh dismiss any new student coming in, so they keep accepting new students. So that's increasing the problem for the uh, school uh, with only four, no, with only five teachers and load of students, they are swamped with work. So Starlight comes up with, not really comes up, but some, so Starlight is trying to change things because um, with the over abundance of students, the teacher will get exhausted, uh, avoidance and stress and probably break out and so on. So uh, she's trying to avoid that and is trying to come up with a plan to, well, solve their problem. And I'm going to pause here. So, uh, yeah, um, honestly speaking, the abundance of students here and the style of the students bothered me for a bit. Yeah. And this is not one of those, oh no, um, your art is bad. No, 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 no. The art is sufficeable and it looks good. The problem is that with this, with how the story is, uh, with the introduction of what, um, the story, uh, basically, uh, crossing universe and generations and so on. I thought all these ponies were G1 ponies. <laughs> Really? Kind of, because here's the thing. Um, when you look at, when you first look at Pinkie Pie and so on, she looks similar to, well, G, her G4 style. And when you look at the, um, uh, first pony, uh, the first panel with the ponies outside, they're different. They don't look like G4 ponies. Yeah, and this is the second the thing that's uh, the problem with the, uh, with uh, this art. Uh, it's just like the artist is not uh, well, it's not used to draw, uh, drawing ponies to begin with, which is why it becomes all of them more noticeable when you when they are uh, what do you call them um, uh, when you 
cop is from the show. Yeah, I mean, uh, they don't Redraw- redraws. Yeah, uh, they yeah. they don't really they don't really look red. Sorry, are you talking about the main uh, the main six or the original ponies? I, I mean uh, the main six. Ah, yes. Uh, that's especially noticeable uh, in the, in this part because you notice there are some uh, pinky looks uh, a bit off in some places, but in the others it looks like it's taken directly out from the show. Probably. I mean, it's one of those yeah. things where it, it, it feels like it, but personally for me, I don't really notice it until I really squint and really look at it. But at the same time too, it's... One of those scenarios where I feel like the artist is just trying to practice a bit, you know, just getting her, um, just getting her warm ups and whatnot. That's what I think. I don't know because she she draws good. Yeah, when it comes to humans, but uh, yeah, talking courses are apparently something different. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't blame her, but still, there's. You can see the stark contrast between the two. True, but still, um, uh, that's that's why I notice and I, I I see like, oh wow, um, what happened to the school of friendship? Uh, is it over being overrun by G one ponies? Are they gonna explain it? Yes, they're gonna explain it, but it's increasing of students. And this, I, I've had this conversation way back when with I think Silver, uh, talking about. Um, the friendship you remember that episode that lost Pegasus, um, yeah, university. Yes, suddenly Twilight being angry that ah, another Scott is copying my stuff, uh, my shtick. Ah, get angry, Arr. and at the same time, too, I'm thinking like Twilight, just give it a break. I mean, the school of friendship is not the only place where people would want to study friendship it's best that if another location would have popped up so you don't get swamped with students and you have the only monopoly to this kind of education apparently the flim flam brothers thing was a scam so yeah you got your wish I mean, why would you go over there all the way in Las Vegas and pay for for studying when you can get it for free here? <sighs> this hurts me because I know <laughs> in certain part of Europe, education is free, right? Yeah, over here it's free. Fuck, you lucky bastards. Mm. <laughs> oh, boys. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, anything more you want to add on to ponies? Well, uh, a few things. I mean, this one's a small complaint, but the first panel with Pinkie Pie, considering she's squealing, it doesn't feel that she's got a depressed facial expression. Yeah. Feels like it. Like certain points where certain facial expressions don't match the situation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but for the the other one, well, uh, this is uh, this is the part where Bishu finally comes and comes up that the fans of the show pretty much anticipated would happen the moment season eight started. Main six are working in the school of friendship by themselves and having to fulfill their obligation outside of it. So yeah, that was never going to end well. So. This kind of pretty much makes it the conflict which the villains then uh, exploit in the story. Also, it does. Uh, the the writer for this comic here, uh, who now writer, 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 uh, Gilly. Casey Gilly, uh, they bring up a good point, and yeah, it's 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 a plot point that the show didn't really bothered or didn't really try to address yeah. and the comic here addressed pretty well like I, I like the uh way that it's using what the fans notice as a problem to their advantage so yeah yeah good job writer good job golf clap for you anywho okay let's carry on <laughs> so we go back to 
the other universe where there's humans. Ooh. Long story short, the girls are making pizzas. And their pizza is very interesting. It's dough, cheese, tomato sauce. And it's, has, it, it has a no pony sign on it. What? But you know what? And apparently, <laughs> and apparently green peppers are for the main. Yeah, you know what? If you like it, you like it. Go whatever. So, anywho, um, they start planning and whatnot, and try to think of stuff, and <laughs> they they really want to uh, wreak havoc on the ponies, but this is one of those things where uh, Dyer just mentions. They didn't say which universe, which is kind of... I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this becomes real, real problem because... Well, uh, I'll, I'll let you finish, I'll let you finish. I, I, sorry, no, no problem, but still, uh, I like it. I, I like how, the, I like the way you think. And, yeah, <laughs> uh, rules lawyers, uh... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but let let's face it; it's all the fault of this supposed cloud goblin, goblin. But let's call it what what he really is—a chunky possum. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. oh. it, it's his fault that the witches found G four universe when their moms instructed them to play hammock in the ponies from their universe because they obviously don't we have no idea that G four universe exists. Well, they, <laughs> here's here's why I'm trying to know this because. Um, their info which uh universe are the ponies in what like yeah um i'm i'm trying to read up and they don't really say which uni uh, which ponies they they just say ponies so mhm mm let, let's screw stuff with whatever we want yeah <laughs> so we are introduced to trench trench the one that's going to eat the trespassers mm -hmm. And Trench is a possum, a really fat possum. So yeah, but technically he's called a lava goblin. That's lava goblin. Yeah, I, I don't know which part of this is uh, anything like a goblin or lava. Uh, I, so yeah, let's just stick with the possum. Yeah, I I, I think uh, Princess Luna has a moon golem then. <laughs> <laughs> Oh god. Five years. Yes. Another T. <laughs> Alrighty then. So anywho, uh they call in Trench and Trench has a special ability where he can dimension walk. Uh or dimension warp, I don't know. Uh, pick one, I don't know. So uh he can open up rifts in reality where he can just move to different universes. Which is pretty cool. So the girls offer him a deal where they feed him with pizza and go get info on the ponies, which he does. Uh, they, <laughs> they, they opens they, opens up a table in the wardrobe and just jumps through. Yeah, yeah. Time space stuff. <laughs> I'm not even gonna question it. So, uh. He goes exploring, and we see what the girls want to do. And um, from what I can tell, the girl never had any friends. They're never been out of the uh, mountains, so they're kind of secluded. They're they're kind of um, otaku's, if you might uh, say. <laughs> Well, I mean, they're permanently, at least the, the way I and I read it correctly, was that they're permanently trapped inside the volcano. Although then I wondered how their moms got out. If, no, I, 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 I'm, either that or I read it wrong. Either that or I read it wrong. That's one of the things where I don't really get it because, from what I understand, is that they can only use their witching powers. In, in the confine of the volcano, but once you go out of it, you have no powers. You're just a normal human. So, anywho, anywho, um, 
let's carry on because if we keep asking questions, uh, this podcast is going to be long. So, anywho, um, they, they tried to find a costume for Trash, tr- tr- Trash, Trench, Trench to blend in well with the Pony universe. And they decide not to because Trench just goes on your own. So, uh, uh, Grekel asked Dyer a question, like they're, they're playing a game, uh, top three things you'd do if you weren't under a legacy curse or something like that. So, um, Dyer wants to star in an all which just roller coaster der- um, roller derby team, play guitar in a hex rock band, and curse anything that tries to stop her. Uh, while uh, uh, Grekel wants to play uh, play group Halloween, sorry, plan a group Halloween costume a year in advance, go to some anime conventions, and <laughs> uh, scorch my name, something, 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 because uh, she was interrupted. And it seems that Trench here works fast, because he got some dirt on uh, the pony universe, and well, not so much dirt, more like uh, imitation. Yes. Oh, I forgot to mention that Rainbow Dash had a brilliant idea. Was it Rainbow? Because I remember it was Rainbow. I think it comes later down, down the line. Oh God, timing. So, anywho, let's... Wait, hold, hold, hold on. I. <laughs> I'm a bit confused now. Uh... Ah, now I noticed. Okay. Oh, God. They're doing the whole warp in, warp out time thing and then like staying with one character. It's, it's wibbly wobbly tiny. It's wibbly wobbly tiny wobbly stuff. So what we... Uh, I'm guessing the idea is here is what Trench experienced while he was... Uh, universing hopping. So wait, hold on. No, no, I think it is uh, uh, normal transition because uh, la- later in the pages it shows the trench comes back and he's roughed up, but in the one that he comes back uh, earlier, he's not. So yeah, I think. Trench just went in and saw the whole uh, thing happening with the... Uh, no, you know what? Let, let's just continue for now. But here's another problem that I noticed with the comics. It's the um, progression of time, how linear it goes. Because, we, because I read ahead and I, I know what's going to happen. So that's why I know that Rainbow Dash... Um, how do I put this? Uh, that's why I know Rainbow Dash um, suggested to send letters to other schools, um, inviting them to teach at uh, the School of Friendship. And Trench intercepted it. So, yay, uh, that makes sense to me because I read ahead. But reading this, my interpretation of the scenario is that Trench is retelling what happened for him to get the letter and so on. Uh, I don't know, because when, when, when the witches are making fun of the whole school at the end, then they said that French is going to go there. I think that's uh, in line with the transition that follows. Yeah, oh God. So, oh my goodness. So, anywho, um, let, let's go to ponies again because we got ponies. Yeah. So, Starlight invites um, Sunburst to the... Uh, well, not really invite. He's already a, a professor there. So... Yeah, they're having lunch. Yeah, they're having lunch and uh, bringing up ideas on how do we solve our problem. Um, they decide on uh, should we 
uh, switch around the timing of the stuff and blah 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 and so on and long story short uh, Rainbow Dash just says like um, what if we ask ponies in other towns if they like to come teach here and Starlight Starlight doesn't say much because there's a kerfuffle in <coughs> the hallway where a fat trench slips on a banana peel I think no yes I don't know yeah this uh <laughs> These two pages are really confusing, especially in the second one, where Trench apparently tripped, o- tipped over Starlight's bust in order to open the door, apparently. But the banana pill that Raymond Dash threw somehow made him sleep, and the bus fell on top of him as well. Uh, it's what? Yeah, that, that that's that's. Oh man, this is what I mean by uh, I remember the word sequential art. It's not. It's not really doing a good job of doing that. Like, like I mentioned before, the girls got a letter saying, "At the school of friendship, all creatures are welcome. Attend, learn." Okay, sorry, my bad. I I I travel in time for a bit, so somehow Trench went to Ponyville, got a pamphlet or flyer for the school of friendship. So, yeah, okay, my bad. You're right, you're right. <coughs> so, they sent Trench back in to infiltrate and dig some dirt or info on the situation there. Uh, f- from Trench's point of view, he dimension hops in, um, tries to listen into the teachers, uh, the student pay attention, yes and no, to him, because, well... There's a possum, probably Professor Fluttershy's friend. And the possum plays dead. Okay. Now, possum looks at bus, climbs up, and pushes it down. Somehow, possum goes down to the ground, and bus falls down at what? Yeah, it's really confusing on the steam transition. Yep. Oh, God. Like the banana pickle and just go and fall through the door or something. And Rainbow Dash, that's just un. Where are your manners? <laughs> so anywho, um, we go back to the G one universe. Well, I, before you do, uh, I do have one uh, one more thing. Uh, the two panels in the first page where the possum looks like he's almost as big as Ponus and we know he's not that big. Oh, yeah. So, again, the perspective problem. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Oh, man. The art is yeah. all over the place in terms of quality. Yeah. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's questionable. Ah, I got my head. I'm having a headache already. Sometimes it's clapping. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we we go back to G one, uh, and they're trying to plan on a way to cause a bit of mischief for the ponies, uh, boils, locusts, hoof rot, and so on. So, uh. They they have to think big because they want to make their mums proud. So they they think of a plan and the plan is to use the schmooze. Yeah, the, the original schmooze from their universe, but apparently different kind. The, and I don't know, I'm not sure how it's supposed to work when Smooth is supposed to be a sludge-like creature that resembles Shagoth from Love, Love, Lovecraft Mythos. But they're apparently supposed to make it like po- look like ponies. Mm, prob- <laughs> we, we, we shall... We, 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 we will go to that when it uh, arrives. But um, long story short, they want to make their mums proud because... They they want their mother's approval. Uh, so let's see, blah blah blah. Yes, revenge. So 
they they intercepted the letter from Rainbow Dash, uh, reading it and replying to the letter, and well, not so much the intercepted. It, it seems like uh, Trent stole the letter before it was sent. <laughs> I would consider that as intercepting because Rainbow Dash just forgot to send it. <laughs> But anywho, so for the girls plan to work, uh they sent Trench to places to gather the materials to make a schmooze. Uh let's see. We got the plan where uh sorry, we got a plan where got the letter. Now we just need some one who isn't totally helpless outside this volcano to gather the ingredients to make schmooze or trench, yes. Like I mentioned before, uh, he traveled across G1 to gather the materials to create schmooze and yeah, go back home. Or trench. Mm -hmm. So, back in G4, uh, Starlight Glimmer got a letter from. Uh, from some ponies from Havert Uni, uh, Unicorn City? Unicorn City? Yes. Uh, so, long story short, they've got teachers to come and uh, sub not really substitute, to, but to teach them. And Starlight just says, Rainbow, your plan was awesome. It, it worked splendidly. And they say that they receive a letter from Harvard uh, Unicorn University. And Rainbow just says, wait, what? Uh, I didn't. You know what? Don't really care. I plan good. Yay, yay us. <laughs> so they set up banners, a welcoming committee, and so on, blah, blah, blah. Even Twilight is there. And when... They hear a knock on the door. It's the professors from Havert. And once they appeared, it's, it's not what they expect. And the comic ends there. And, <sighs> yep. Um, I was, I was confused. So, anywho, um, final thoughts then, I guess? <laughs> Rainbow Dash, the element of honesty she is not. Mm -hmm. yeah, if she had just said something, everybody would have been quickly become suspicious on what was going on. But there is a phrase called uh, never look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> so, the, this is the gift horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, as for the ending, I'm gonna call DWK's Rainbow Rocks when Sunset meets the Dazzlings. Hi, are you the bad guys? <laughs> we are. <laughs> okay, um, I, I have to raise a hand and just say this, or just ask. When you look at these ponies, were you expecting the girls and trench Coming through the portal? No, not really. I was. Because it was clear that the from uh, it was actually uh, the they're gonna make a smooth monster made of ponies. And even then, uh, they said they can't use powers so outside of the universe. But uh, actually, uh, that's a problem. But it's not relevant for right now. Yeah, but but but. For me personally, what I, from my interpretation of the story, is that they wanted to get sh to make smooth, but they didn't really say what. Uh, if you're a G one person who seen the thing, uh, in my mind, they just cross through and release a smooth here. Th that's about it. So you know what happened when you dimension hop, right? You you turn into ponies and so on. So. I was confused a bit because, okay, uh, biggest one is because of the purple pony at the side. 
it could be Grekel because she's purple. Well, yeah, th- th- that's true. Yeah, she does look like it. But other to none of them is yellow, nor does she have a blue hair. Well, okay, <laughs> blue green hair, but that's beside the point. Yeah, but but that's the thing. Like, um, I I I saw it that way, and that's my interpretation. And Till you know what I'm just gonna wait for part two because or is it part three? But anywho, um, yeah, I I thought it was them, and uh, having a uh, trench turn into a pony, that is interesting. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine the possum becoming a pony. You see a dragon turn into a dog. <laughs> yes, but I think we can all agree that. The Equestria girl girls operate some different magical logic. That is true. <laughs> but yeah, oh, okay. Um, I I, yeah. I cut you off on your thoughts. Okay, uh, carry on. Yeah, well, all in all, this was a first issue. It's not really a, a bad start, although the the obvious art was become quickly visible. But that's about it. Hmm. All right. And as for me. I like this first issue. It it shows me that it has potential, and it keeps me wanting to read more. And this is the first time where I've actually read all from start to finish. I, I I've done that in a day. That's how gripping this story is. So it it kept me asking for more and more and more, which is great. That's good. Uh, the art is a bit iffy because it's good at some parts while questionable at some. Um, I'm assuming that the artist is not used to drawing uh, animals, especially pony. Uh, ponies in its... How do I put this? Drawing ponies. Um, pony in the My Little Pony Generation 4 style. So... Um, I I can give them a bit of leeway because uh, it's your first quote unquote first try. You'll do better probably later on. Who knows? And I wonder about. <laughs> uh, I, I I'm not gonna jump right into it because um, suspension or just just to suspend the audience at home. But yeah. for for this story. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, the story is an 8. I like it. The sequential to- uh, the sequential storytelling, that's a 5. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Because, it gets real confusing. Yeah, because when I, who can accept certain story... And even though how confusing it is, and I can understand it, this is just confusing. Like, how do I put this? One one of the biggest um uh things for me was the starting with ponies. Like suddenly a lot of ponies. Why and why do they look like G one ponies or this rendition of G one? But no, no, no. It's just uh, more students coming in. Oh, okay. No problem. But yeah, I, I feel like the way that the story is told, like the biggest um, offen- o- uh, offense to this is uh, when Tiberius, no, not Tiberius, Trench, uh, when Trench comes back to Ponyville and the School of Friendship where he's trying to spy on the teachers. Like, what the hell is up with the bus? I don't know. <laughs> But overall, I I want more. <laughs> yeah, the first issue was good. A good start. Yep. Uh, it has its ups and downs, but if it's asking me for more, then yeah, it's good. It's good. Uh, do you have anything more to add on that? Honestly, nothing really. Nothing really. I do, I do like the... The what do they call the alternate arts for the covers? Design is Garboska. Ah, yes. 
that that looks awesome. <laughs> and also uh Samantha uh Win uh Samantha Win. Uh, Win. I like that one too. That 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 one is just so cute. Uh it's a G one, yeah. Yeah. So it's all good. I like it, I like it, I like it. But anywho, um uh that's the end of the first issue. Um there's another four more to go. And as we keep going on, it will be very exciting. Yeah. I wonder if we can get silver next time, although yeah, we're gonna see. Yeah, we're we'll, gonna we'll see. I, I, I think he has a lot to say about this, probably. So anyway, um let's wrap things up. Yeah, we've been a while. It's been a while. So if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at the Uh the you, sorry, uh, you can also reach us on the Twitter, the show's Twitter account is at NBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, you can find me on DeviantArt under username Yaka from Torcad, under Twitter name user uh, Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading story Thermal Rising, you can find it on finfiction.net under the username JFT. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals uh, in a dual fantasy setting called Tales of the Ashes, you can find it on the talesoftheashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Go check it out, guys. Uh, and also, please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also, Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also get us on ponylive.com. Links will be in the show notes. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank you, Jacob, Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, myself, Lack, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. See ya. Ah, crap. Ugh, I'm, I noticed I'm still brown. <laughs> oh, no. This questionable? I don't know. <laughs> it's not smooth, I can tell you that. It's actually the paint. <laughs>